The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of WLMB TV 40 Toledo. Welcome to Main Street. We're at the Mommy Indoor Theater and we're getting ready for a pre-screening of the film, I Can Only Imagine. This movie is coming out March 16th. And we're going to be interviewing John Irwin in this episode. He is the director and producer of this wonderful film. That's right, and we want you to stick around to the end of Main Street where you're going to get our reaction, our feedback, but also get some viewer audience reaction as well. And now to our interview with John Irwin. Well, I want to welcome you to another episode of Main Street. I'm Jamie Schmitz, and of course, I'm joined by my co-host for almost two decades now, Virginia Basse. <laughs> oh, Jamie. Oh, well, we have an exciting show today. I, I am super pumped. We have with us writer, director, producer, filmmaker, John Irwin, and, uh, you know, with about, he's here to share about the movie I Can Only Imagine. Yep. Hey, uh, John, great to have you with us. Thank oh, you so much for being here. with us. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, uh, well, you know, I give you guys and everyone that um, watches the films, we say that what we do, it's not about us, it's about the people sitting in those seats and giving them the best experience that we can. And, and um, really, they're you guys and everyone that promotes the film or watches them are, are, are our boss. You know, we work for you and you guys have given us like the best job in the world. I mean, we say we're, we're storytellers serving the greatest storyteller of all time. And uh, a movie can be a very special thing and a very special tool that if you can tell a story that's entertaining, that's emotionally relatable no matter what you believe, but that is the right story that showcases the, what we fall in love with is the transformational power of the gospel. This can tra transform your life. It can be an incredible tool. Uh, as well as an entertaining film, and that's what we try to do. All right, well, your newest title, um, I Can Only Imagine, mm -hmm. shares a powerful true story about the backstory to the hit song, I Can Only Imagine, you know, written by the lead singer of Mercy Me, Bart Miller. And so this movie opens in theaters March 16th. Mm -hmm. So before we get into more of this interview, let's take a look at the promotional trailer now. It's an amazing song. It just kind of happened. Took about 10 minutes, I guess. Bart, you didn't write this song in 10 minutes. Took a lifetime. How'd you do this? You know, I've never told anybody my story. When I was uh, 11 years old, life was tough. Where's mama? She's gone. She don't want me no more. No! And she don't want you neither. And I've always loved music. And I found some songs that I just, I held on to. They gave me hope. Mercy me, that can't be his real voice. Because I needed it. Dad, I can do this. No, you can't. And you're going to blink your eyes, and you're going to realize that life has gotten you nowhere because you chased some stupid dream. I can only I'm leaving, Shan. I want you to know that I pray for you all the time. And I hope that you find whatever it is that you're looking for out there. What are you running from? My dad. Then write about it. Let that pain become your inspiration. I have some stuff I need to sort out. And I deal with it the only way I know how. And that's to write a song. You hungry? I set the table. What is this? I want to make things right. You and me. My dad was a monster, and I saw God transform him. You have a gift, real gift. I didn't think that God could do that. And so I wrote this song for my dad.
So this trailer alone is just like so powerful, well, you know, you. about heads me in tears. Um, you know, <laughs> so why, why do you feel that this story was something that had to be told? Well, I can only imagine is the best selling, most played Christian song of all time. Mm -hmm. And it certainly was a song that was just an anchor for me at, at, at times of loss in our family and I think has been to millions and millions of people. In fact, with that trailer, we've been blown away. Uh, we're about to go over uh, 100 million uh, views on Facebook, is which is just staggering. It's yes. a record for any kind of a faith-based film. But I think it shows how many people feel the same way I do, that mm -hmm. this song, it's not just a song that you know, it's a song that you love and, and it, it, that means something. In fact, we've had 300,000 know, you comments and a lot of people sharing their stories with the song. And, uh, and yet, there's this story behind the song that nobody knows. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember when we were uh, interviewing Bart, who wrote the song, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of, kind of kicking the tires to see what the story was. And, and um, I asked Bart, I said, you know, if I were to put a gun to your head and say, is Jesus real, what would you say? And he said, absolutely. And I said, um, how do you know? I'm just curious if people's answers to that question. He said, because of the, of the change I saw in my dad, the transformation in my dad. I watched a monster transform into my best friend and the man I wanted to become. And there's no other explanation for that. Mm -hmm. And it was that transformation and that reconciliation of a broken man and a broken relationship that inspired this song that has brought hope to millions of people. So I can only imagine as a song about heaven. Uh, we all know that. Right. What we don't know is Bart is singing it for his dad. And, mm -hmm. uh, and to see Dennis Quaid portray that transformation, he said, you know, his first movie was in 1976. And uh, he said, I've never played transformation on film like this before. It's amazing that someone could change like that. Those are the stories we love to tell, is the gospel can change your life, just radically transform your life. And, and so when we knew that, we knew, man, we have to make this movie. And it's, it's a very, very special story. You've been going around the country doing pre-screenings. Yeah. Uh, and what are some of the unique responses that you have seen the different pre-screening audiences have as they've, you know, watched this film from beginning to end? That's a great question. I mean, I think ultimately, first of all, I sat, you know, we sat down with Bart very early and said, what is the phenomenon of I Can Only Imagine? Again, it's the best-selling, most played Christian song of all time. It charted on country and pop charts became the number one song on many top 40 stations. In fact, one of the stories that was written in was a, a woman was ready to to end her life on a bridge and she had it on a top 40 station. And I can only imagine came on the station because it was the most requested song, wow. It Saved Your Life. And, and there's a lot of stories like that. And so I said, what is, why would an independent band from Texas write a song that would touch the world like this? And he said, it's a rush of hope. It's just, it's, it's hope. That's why people love the song. And so we wanted that to be, because I, I told him, I said, I think I've got to give that to people in the theaters in an even exponential way or you know, your fan base is gonna burn my house down because the I Can Only Imagine fans are very <laughs> passionate people. And so we wanna, we wanna make you feel that same thing you felt when you, you heard the song, that rush of hope, that there's always hope of a transformed life, of a transformed relationship, and the hope of heaven. Beyond that, to see what people are doing after the movie is pretty amazing. I, one story in a, a pre-screening, guy in his 20s, um, Christian guy, hadn't seen his dad since he was like 12 years old and really? uh, harboring a lot of bitterness. Uh, for what his dad had done to him, found him in the theater on Facebook, scheduled a meeting with him the next day, forgave him, shared Christ with him. That's happening a lot. That's amazing. And that's pretty cool. And, and that would be a, a pretty amazing thing. Um, uh, it's like a dual message. There's a message for those that are like Dennis Quaid's character that feel like they've just kind of, they've screwed up their life so much. Uh, well, you can't, you can't mess it up so much that God can't fix it, you know? And so there, there's, a, there's a story for, for that person. And there's people accepting Christ in the theaters that are just finding hope from the things that they've done. But there's also a message for that person that needs to forgive yes. and, and that, re that reconciliation that needs to happen, you know. And so, you know, it's like that last verse in the Old Testament, the hearts of the fathers being drawn to the son and the sons to the fathers. That's happening uh, with this film and, and that's exciting to me. Yeah. Now, John, I can only imagine it's not your first film though, is it? No. Uh, tell us about some <laughs> of the other titles that you've worked on. Well, my journey began, I was 15 years old, much in a station like this, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was one of the, there was a camera in the back that nobody was running and I decided to run it as a teenager. My dad had a show. Uh, he was in Christian radio and, and had a TV show as well. And then uh, I got the chance to run camera for ESPN because somebody got sick when I was 15 and kind of, <laughs> I was like a, a Christian kid that joined the circus and never looked back. And uh, then the Christian artist, uh, Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant uh, uh, gave us a break to do a music video for them in our late, I was in my late teens and wow. that began a career doing music videos and 
and we did very well. We, we won video of the year uh, three years in a row and had a career. I went to work, um, uh, I directed the second unit on a Christian movie uh, uh, for a friend of yours, Alex Kendrick, uh, called Courageous. Yes. That's a very, that's a Cinderella story. You know, the church in Albany, uh, Sherwood makes movies and they mm -hmm. make them primarily with church volunteers. That's right. Um, well, this one they wanted to do some car chases and some action sequences because it was a police movie. And you never want to mix that with church volunteers. You know, people can get run over. <laughs> so it was my job to take professionals away and, and just basically execute what Alex had in his head and build these action sequences. And I love chasing things with the camera and <laughs> blowing things up. It's fun. So, so, uh, and, and, uh, so as I was doing that, Alex asked me a question, uh, really the first time I met him. He said, John, what's your purpose and the purpose of your work? And not only could I not answer the question, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Uh, and I realized that God had given me a gift, and my brother and I, and also a long period of time for us to hone our, our craft, you know, doing all these little videos, music videos, and all these other things. So um, that sunk deep, deeply into my heart, and it was kind of like our career to calling moment, and it led to a film called October Baby. Yeah. And that was our first film, and we had no idea what we were doing. And, I and, heard you had and, a little uh, help from grandmother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, you've, de you've plowed deeply into my resume. I will, not, I will not say whether or not the first quarter million dollars was from my grandmother or not, That's but one nothing awesome is grandma. below me. Yeah, she's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and uh, you know, we just we put together the funds to make it and also release it, and it opened in the top 10 with Samuel, via Samuel Goldwyn. And, it was amazing to hear. I remember the first time I heard the story that a, a, you know, a young woman had scheduled an abortion for the next day, gone and seen the film, not knowing what it was about, and it gave her the courage to, to keep her child. And that began to happen all over America and all over the world. And we realized that entertainment is America's second largest export behind agriculture. And this was a way to get the message to the entire world. Uh, that led to a film I made for my wife with Sony called Mom's Night Out, which like multi-million dollar Hallmark card for my wife. Who gets to do that? <laughs> Let's know? do a Christian comedy. I know. Why not? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's right. and, and I think that there can be all kinds of diversity uh, in different types of films and different genres within uh, the idea of Christian movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't need to look at it as one, as only one kind of movie. And then uh, that led to a film called Woodlawn. And that really, I think, is where, you know, they say a filmmaker finds their story and then shares it over and over again. And we found the power of a true story. That well, it's an amazing movie. When truth. that came out, I took my kids to see Thank it. Thank you. We all loved it, and uh, you know, if somebody hasn't seen it out there. You guys should go and you know, and 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 get a hold of that movie and and watch it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that that really is, we found our ultimate passion, which is telling true stories. You just can't you can't argue with the truth, you know, and so uh, which led to I can only imagine. Well, yeah. how is it making you know these Christian movies? in you know in the industry and yeah. Hollywood you know how are you being received yeah well there's great opportunity I think we've only scratched the surface of what can be done uh, with with Christian films and uh, you know <laughs> I remember Sean Astin told me on the set of Woodlawn I think we did a couple films together and he said uh, John I see you guys as frontiersmen and pioneers and I said thank you Sean. that's thank you Sean that's what I want to do I want to blaze a trail and he said, you know, John, most frontiersmen die on the frontier. And I, and I thought, well, I never thought about that. Uh, but there will be a clearly marked trail for that next person that comes along and, and uh, will be frozen pointing to the summit. But, you know, entertainment is a rough industry. Um, it's, it's one of the most competitive industries on earth. That's why I love it. Um, and, and, you know, it's dangerous on several levels. But, you know, so was Rome in the first century or whatever. I mean, God calls us out of our comfort zone and into places that aren't necessarily safe. Uh, to serve him. And, uh, and so I, I look forward to be, being able to, if you think about the people that launched Andy and I's uh, music video career, Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant and some of those other artists, and you think about where Christian music was at the time uh, and where they lifted it. And now it's this platform where a lot of young artists can have their voices heard and make mm -hmm. a living. That's really what we want to do with Christian film. And I dream of a day where a, a movie that is, that is strategic, that is infused with the gospel, can compete with Star Wars and Jurassic World. I don't think anything stops us from that. Uh, I don't know how far Andy and I will go on that journey and how much we can inspire others, but I'm telling you, there's enough Christians out there. We have plenty of, of money. Uh, we just haven't dreamed big enough. So it's nice to, to kind of be a part of that, of that early group. There's only about maybe 10 of us. And uh, right. you know, there's no playbook. We're just trying to figure it out and blaze the trail. Well, we're going to take a break for a moment, real quick here, and also take a look at a teaser for the movie, and we'll be right back.
When I was uh, 10, 11 years old, life was tough. And I found some songs that I just, man, I, I held on to. And they got me through. They gave me hope. Because I needed it. Maybe tonight, so do you. Dad, why don't you come watch me sing? Dreams don't pay the bills. You're not ready. I don't think you found your song, found your soul. Let that pain become your inspiration. Then you'll have something that people can believe in. My dad was a monster, and I saw God transform him from a man that I hated into the man I wanted to become. And so I wrote this for my dad. amazing song just kind of happened took about 10 minutes I guess it didn't take you 10 minutes to write this it took a lifetime I can only imagine. that is just brings up so much emotion and just seeing the trailer so so powerful yeah. you know how involved was Bart Miller you know lead singer yeah. of Mercy Me in the making of this movie he's been incredibly involved loves the film um, and and loved the script and and it was you know that collaborative process with him, that's really the most important person to screen with. I remember when Tony Nathan on Woodlawn said with tears in his eyes, you know, 95, 98%, I think is what he said, uh, happened just like that, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and working with a guy like Bart and saying, look, we're not painting a portrait, we're not taking a photograph, this is a portrait. You know, you have to, you have to kind of compress the story together, but you, you, you have to get the essence of it right and the heart of it right, and, and everything in the film happened. And, uh, and even stuff I wouldn't want to give away that it's like, could that have really happened? It really did. It's incredible, especially at the end <laughs> of the film. And, uh, and so it's cool to work with him. And, and uh, he was on set most every day and has been deeply involved in the process. And then they've been, of course, out touring uh, for about nine months on behalf of the film. They're out right now. And they're fresh off winning Artist of the Year and Songwriter of the Year and Pop Album of the Year. Awesome. They were nominated for a couple Grammys, so it's just great time. And they're, they're a great band. They're one of the enduring bands in in uh, uh, in Christian music. And in fact, their their song Even If was the number one song for 21 weeks uh, this year. Uh, their most successful song since I can only imagine. So they're just a wonderful band to work with. Bart's a great guy, and I think he is a lot of courage in sharing this story especially with his relationship with his dad, with how sure. bad it was and then how good it got, you know, and I think it's going to bring hope to a lot of people. And I, I appreciate the boldness in his honesty to, to, tell, to tell this story and to tell this side of it and, and this backstory to the song that we all love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just watching one of the uh, clips mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, Dennis Quaid plays yeah. um, Bart's dad. Yeah. And one of the scenes they talk about the fact that you know, when he's 10, 11 years old, his dad beat him. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he was a monster. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's a later scene where uh, he tries to serve him breakfast. Yeah. Ma matter of fact, a frittata. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and yeah. Uh, trying to make up mm -hmm. and reconcile with the son. But uh, Dennis Quaid, uh, fascinating actor over yeah. the years. Uh, what was it like working with Dennis Quaid, uh, well, play, playing the role of Bart's dad? I mean, Dennis was like having Michael Jordan on the set. You know, I, I he's he's headlined blockbuster movies. He's also you know, like The Day After Tomorrow, and he he's been one of these iconic actors. Uh, but also things like The Rookie or Soul Surfer, and, and you know, he's from Texas, and um, his mom uh, was a devout Christian. He wrote her a song when she passed away, very much like uh, Imagine, so he had that connection to it. And, and just a great guy and a great actor. And what's great about this is it really, it really is a unique performance in his body of work. There's an authenticity and a humility and a, a brokenness to his character. That scene in the kitchen that you talk about, when he's trying to apologize, um, and to do his best as this tough Texan to humble himself and apologize and reconcile. Yeah. Um, and then Bart doesn't know if he can forgive. And the whole movie 
in that scene, yeah. it's, it almost stops. I mean, there's no music, there's no camera tricks. It's just two actors shining. It's, it's my favorite scene in the movie. And, mm -hmm. and to see Quaid say, can God forgive me, um, you know, is something that I think a lot of people ask. Yeah. Like, it, it's what I've done too, too much. Uh, for God to forgive me, and to see Bart wrestle with that, and I think my, you know, to see this veteran like Dennis Quaid, one of the miracles of the film was finding Bart, because Andy and I, we had a lot of experience in the music uh, world, so we were very adamant, this kid has to sing. He's got to sing these songs, you know? So it's like, where do you find that? Where do you find someone that looks like Bart Miller, that has a middle American grit and sensibility, that also has the voice of an angel? And I was up in New York, and I went to see Les Mes on Broadway. And John Michael was the understudy to Jean Valjean. On, uh, but that vocal so difficult, the, the, the lead could only do about three performances a week. So, so he, he took Valjean about 60 times over the course of that run. And to see him and hear him sing these iconic songs was unbelievable. And then come to find out he had just submitted an online audition. His dad's a pastor, and he saw Mercy Me play three times in high school. So talk oh, about a needle awesome. in a haystack. It was unbelievable. One of the things that Andy and I love to do is to launch young talent. Mm -hmm. and to, uh, We need more Christians in the entertainment Absolutely. industry. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I love to launch people and then surround them with the very best. And so, of course, Leachman, Academy Award winner, Trace Atkins is just great. I mean, he's a really, really great actor. Madeline Carroll, is, uh, uh, she was first cast as uh, Kevin Costner's daughter in Swing Boat when she was 11. She's really, really great, passionate believer as well. And so it was this wonderful cast. And, and I mean, a great cast is like a great team. And this is, mm -hmm. this is a championship team. They're, they're just a great ensemble. Well, you know, having a cast like that and, uh, you know, all the time uh, in production, you know, you've got to have some great stories to share. Yeah, we filmed this movie in 25 days really fast wow. in Oklahoma. And, uh, and I remember there's a scene at the end where he finally, the song is debuted. And uh, we had over, I, before that, I had only ever had about 1,000 extras. That was the most we'd ever had. And we had about 13,000 people RSVP, many people that were just fans mm. of the song from the surrounding region. A snowstorm hit Oklahoma City, and we're like, oh, no. How, how are we going to do the last scene of the movie? And 2,500 people showed up in a snow, <laughs> no in a blizzard way. and stayed till 4 in the morning. And it just, you can't stop the people of Oklahoma, I guess. But it just showed how passionate people are for this song. And God had his hand on it. There were miracle after miracle. It was amazing to see now, the film it, together. It's not unusual for a movie to shoot for 10, 11, 12, 13 weeks. Yeah. You just said 25 days. Five that's weeks. Like, that's like, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, well, it's actually less than a month. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, close, five working close, days, so yeah. it's five days, and then five days on, two days off, so it's oh. five weeks total. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, so that was the... So what was the typical production day like? I mean, when did you start? When did you end? What was the pressure? Give, give, the, give, our, viewers, set, give our viewers a film give our set viewers is a little like bit. controlled yeah. chaos. I mean, it's stuff <laughs> going wrong chaos. all the time. It's like moving around Barnum and Bailey Circus and, and you're, you know, all these changes, um, you know, the weather and an actor's availability, you have to stay very nimble and, uh, you know, the work starts when you wake up and stops when you go to sleep and starts again when you wake up. I mean, it's literally production is like a it's like summer camp mm -hmm. and I take my family with me because I've I have four kids and uh, love my wife and so our fourth uh, Logan was born two weeks before we up and moved to Oklahoma for oh, four wow. months to do the pre-production and the filming uh, but you know what's interesting is I didn't want it to stop we the, the 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 production crew and the cast and the producers everyone gelled and it was like a family and it was really sad I almost wanted to get behind schedule just to keep it going. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the team functioned at such a high, you know, I'm one member of an incredible team of people. And, and life is about the teams that you can create. If you want to do something really great, it's about how great the people are that you can recruit. And we had an incredible team on this movie. And one of our goals is to just, you know, raise the bar and really kind of chase quality as an ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, George Lucas said films are never complete, they're only abandoned, and That's I agree right. with him. Mm -hmm. But I think as Christians, we should really try to earn the message that we care about, uh, not use it as a crutch. I think, you know, the tickets to our movies cost as much as Star Wars, and so we, we really just try to kill ourselves to just, to just um, get a little better and better every time. Perform with and, excellence. Uh, yeah, and really model excellence, and, uh, and I'm very, very proud of the work that the team uh, accomplished on this movie. Let me ask you one thing. When you're under that much pressure on a daily shoot, did you ever come, I, I have no reason for asking this question. It's just no, it's fine. curiosity <laughs> yeah. is killing the cat. Did you ever have a situation where like, 
you, it's time to move on, we have to move on, you know, but you stopped it and said, no, we have got to get this right. Oh, that's right. A great, yes, absolutely. There was a scene, um, it's revealed late in the movie that Bart would sing, and this happens, this, this was real, Bart would sing at his church, uh, and that's where he kind of started singing. His dad didn't want to go to church. He didn't feel like he belonged there. His shame kept him there. But without Bart knowing it, he would listen on the radio to his son sing. Mm. And that's what saved him, because he would listen to the preaching after his son. Uh, Christian radio. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. on Christian radio. And so there was this moment, and this is revealed late in the film. It's super emotional. Basically, it's intercut with Bart singing at his dad's bedside as his dad's uh, you know, being taken by cancer, and he's singing Amazing Grace a cappella, and it's going back and forth to that moment that, that, uh, that Quaid is just breaking down and um, listening to the radio. And we did it about three times, and Quaid did this thing where he just leans forward, and he just did this thing, and it, it was kind of out of the frame, and we moved on. And I literally, it was like a splinter in my mind, and I stopped that. I said, we've got to go back and get that last little thing that Quaid did. And Andy went and got him. And there's this shot, and it's one of the longest shots in the movie, where just it's on Quaid's face as he's coming to Christ, as he's breaking down and releasing all that guilt and shame. And it's so powerful. And I'm so glad we went back and got it because uh, um, I would never have been able to forgive myself. And so it's one of those things where sometimes you just know you have to, you're not quite there, and you just have to dig a little deeper. And, uh, and, and go back and get something, uh, or else you'll, you'll regret it later. So that way. March 16th uh, is the day where it's going to be. You know open what's interesting about that? Uh, yeah. our, our mutual friends, the Kendricks, uh, Stephen Kendrick, asked me, So what is your, the date of your release? And I said, Well, we were thinking about going early March, but the Academy Awards are late this year, so we thought we'd get covered up. So we thought, Well, when does the band finish their tour? And that's March the 11th. That's the last date in their tour, at least for that leg of the tour. So I said, Well, let's. That's Sunday, let's release Friday, March 16th. And he said, dude, your release date is 316. How cool is that? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm John and my release date is 316. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was totally planned ever since the beginning and that's, uh, we're just that smart. the foundations of the world were laid. But, John, but, yeah. 316, that's wonderful. So 316, easy date to remember and, uh, and, a, and a very cool coincidence. And uh, we look forward to everyone seeing the film. Uh, in theaters. There's this amazing thing called FOMO. It means the fear of missing out. And that's what we create when we champion something together as Christians. And that's how we can get back to this generation that we're losing. Mm -hmm. uh, because if we make enough noise together, kind of like Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, everybody had to yell at the same time for the walls to come down. Right. That's what we're asking people to do starting March 16th. I can only imagine March 16th yep. in a theater right here in the greater Toledo area. John, thank you for being yes, with us. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us this week and be sure to join us next week for another great episode of Main Street. And now here's some reactions from people who saw a pre-screening of I Can Only Imagine. I love the fact that we can have movies that have a great impact and it's a good quality show. It was wonderful, it was heartwarming, a story of redemption and I think that um, it will just touch hearts. The film was great, it made me laugh, it made me cry. It was a 10 on a 10 scale. Absolutely, I totally give it two thumbs up. This is one of those movies that you really need to make it an event. Invite your friends, invite your family, and get a large group to go and support this great Christian film. This was amazing. It was top quality, it was absolutely amazing. Everyone should go see it. It was awesome and I thought it was very uh, heartwarming. I was touched throughout the film. Uh, I will definitely be taking a lot of my friends and family to see this movie. WLMB would like to thank all the faithful supporters of WLMB that make this program possible.